Hello, thank you for joining me today for Building Information Modeling and Mechanical Design. My name is Alec Cook and I am an application engineer with Go Engineer. I have been working with SOLIDWORKS for roughly six years now. What got me hooked on SOLIDWORKS was being able to make my ideas become a reality. So speaking of ideas, I'm always working on projects around the house. So getting to learn about BIM and mechanical design has been a very insightful experience. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions about the presentation or SOLIDWORKS in general. Here's the agenda for this presentation. First, I'm going to discuss how intertwined BIM Industries and SOLIDWORKS users are. Then I was fortunate enough to receive work instructions from one of our customers. So I'll showcase their SOLIDWORKS to Revit conversion process. Then to finish off the presentation, I'll show you the conversion process that I came up with. There are many different types of industries that require building information modeling. We have customers who work in electrical, piping, routing, manufacturing, lighting, heavy machinery, and equipment. The list you see here will give you a few examples of our customers who have opened up tech support questions in the past where it'd be like, how do we export to Revit? Uh, how do we translate our data to Revit? Or save Revit compatible format? That kind of thing. So my main focus will be on the conversion process to Revit from SOLIDWORKS. So what is Revit? Revit is Autodesk software used mainly by architectural and structural firms for building design, planning, and constructing. A Revit project contains all the building information, which is broken up into Revit families. Revit families would be all of the like walls, windows, staircase, cabinets, light fixtures, furniture, HVAC, basically everything required for the building. To me, this would be considered parts and assemblies in SOLIDWORKS. So what's the big picture here? How does this impact our SOLIDWORKS users? Our SOLIDWORKS users' mechanical designs play a role in Revit projects. For instance, when you see rendered images, do you ever wonder how they created those images? The escalators, the handrails, furniture, lighting structures, and everything else going into the rendered images must be designed, planned, and built by architects, engineers, and contractors. As the architect is creating these rendered images, they are gathering 3D models and information from their outside vendors, fabricators, engineers to add to their BIM design. I really like how the cross-section here captures how many different BIM industries are involved in a modern day design. So as we saw, there are plenty of industries that work with BIM software like Revit, and they need parts from CAD software like SOLIDWORKS integrated into their architectural models or their Revit projects. Next, we will take a look at a case study from one of our customers who has customers that want their SOLIDWORKS model in a usable Revit family file. I was fortunate enough to work with one of our customers who came up with their very own export to Revit process. They're a light manufacturing company, so they have a lot of customers requesting Revit file versions. In this case study, the conical recessed light you see here needs to be converted to a Revit family file per their customer's request. Ultimately, they are looking to maintain the fixtures itself, material properties, appearances, a light source to emit in a rendering and mounting orientation. In their example, they'll start out by saving a copy of their assembly to include the word BIM in their file name. I really like that they added this layer of protection for their original file name. Uh, in the copied version of the assembly, they remove any components that do not contribute to the outside shape of the light. They also mentioned to hold off on using the defeature command since they will be rebuilding the geometry in Revit. That will come into play later in the presentation when I'm talking about the export to AEC command. So they start by importing a step file that they just created from SOLIDWORKS into AutoCAD, where they then rotate the model because it appears in AutoCAD and Revit, their Z is normal to the top plane, whereas in SOLIDWORKS, Y is normal to the top plane. Then they save the model as a 3D DWG. This step is important when you're importing geometry into Revit family files. As you can see, in a Revit family, you can import 3D DWGs and also aces.sat files, but it doesn't appear to be able to directly import step, IGIS, or like a parasolid file into, Re into a Revit family file. So if you were to export your assembly from SOLIDWORKS as an aces.sat file, to import it directly into Revit, 
you do have the option to pick a coordinate system when saving the file, and that of course implies that you would have to add a coordinate system. Once you add your unique coordinate system, you can select that coordinate system from the export options for ACES files. To begin the Revit import process, open a new family and select generic model family type for the template. There are quite a few templates included in Revit and later in the process we'll select a more appropriate template for the lights. Uh, after they import the Revit family file that automatically generates four tabs. Uh, so to import the DWG, you go to the insert and then select import CAD. And from there, you can select the different file type. So in this case, they'll select their 3D DWG file they created. And then from here, they are going to do a rough rebuild of the model and by selecting that 3D house up in the top of the page there to go to 3D mode. Uh, 3D mode is like how we would create a sketch and do an extrude or create a sketch and cut out. That would be a void in this case. Uh, so they're just going to quickly recreate the geometry here in Revit. So it's native to Revit. After all the extrusions and voids have been created, the model is complete. So at this point, the original DWG CAD file just can be removed and deleted out of the Revit family file. The remaining steps pertain to component materials, the light source, and mounting orientation, which will add a realistic appearance to the model. And this will also be adding more information to the model, which will be imported into a Revit project. So similar to SOLIDWORKS, the properties are over on the left-hand side, and you can adjust the material to improve the visual representation. Since this is a light fixture, we can change the family type from generic to light fixture. This will allow the user to place a light source to add a really nice visual touch in the rendering made by the architects. This step is important because this is how they are adding important lighting information in the BIM document. So the last step would be to add geometry as if the light was mounted in one of its four orientations. For this particular light, it has four mounting options. It can be recessed, suspended, wall mounted, and ceiling mounted. The mounting orientation chosen for the Revit model should match the real fixture as closely as possible. So as you can see here, this would be like if you looked at the tile ceilings in your building and you wanted to replace one of the tiles with the light, that fixture that you see that's going around the light helps represent that in a rendering and in the BIM project. So in this case study, we were able to see one way of converting a SOLIDWORKS assembly file to a Revit family file. Since Revit is BIM software, the goal is to include as much information as possible. Our customer was able to properly update the orientation of the model and then import that file into Revit. Once it was in Revit, they added model information such as the light source and the materials and fixtures as a means of providing more information to the Revit user. So lastly, I would like to explore a built-in command in SOLIDWORKS to export an assembly directly as a Revit family file type. The option to export as a Revit family file was recently introduced in 2019. So that document that was actually created in the case study was created in 2018. So they couldn't export it, their assembly files directly as a Revit family file. So the command is called export to AEC. And when you select that inside of SOLIDWORKS, uh, it starts off by asking, how is this item mounted? Uh, so as I had mentioned earlier, or I hinted at, you will be able to change your coordinate system in the built-in command export to AEC. And then the next step in the property manager would be to select the detail, the level of detail of your export. So how much, uh, how many components do you want to include? Uh, do you want to include all the features or is there features that aren't going to affect the outside shape of the model? So maybe you want to go with more of a custom route. So high, medium, and low are gonna be your automated export options, which I'll go into more detail once we're inside of SOLIDWORKS. And then after that, we'll explore the custom option with selecting components that we wanna remove and that kind of thing. All right, we'll start by using the command search to find export to AEC command, or we can use tools export to AEC. There are three mounting options when choosing the host components. The vanity cabinet is floor-based, 
So I'll select the bottom face of the cabinet. Also notice that the Z will be normal to the face you select as the reference plane. For the reference point, I wanted to note that you do have the option to select the origin as your reference point. When specifying export details, there are three generic options that can save you time. If you select high, the model will be exported as is without removing any components or features. Medium will remove all internal components and they'll be made solid. And then fillets and chamfers less than one inch are removed and holes under two inches in diameter are suppressed. Uh, where low does the same as medium except for the fillets and chamfers that are less than two inches are removed and holes less than three inches are suppressed. To start, I will move forward with the high export detail and I'll come back to custom. What's nice with high, medium, or low is that it takes you straight to the export options. There are two export options. From the dropdown, users have the choice to export as a Revit family file, so .rfa, or an ASIS file type, so .sat. When you export a file as a Revit family file type, you have the option to export your custom properties that you might want to maintain with your files when you're sending that off. So as we saw in the case study, they had a step where they removed all the components from the assembly that did not impact the outside shape. So as we saw in the case study, they had a step where they removed any components from the assembly that did not impact the outside shape. That is the first process in the export to AEC command after you select custom. The second step is to select any important features you want to keep. For instance, you may want to keep the mounting holes for location purposes, or maybe some of the features on the underside if the architect needs to measure that. Um, and then the last step is like the defeature command where you have the ability to remove any features that were not automatically removed. All right, let's take a look at what it's like to export using custom. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at when we select custom, what do we have to customize? Uh, so again, I'll start by selecting the command search to find export to AEC. This vanity is a floor-based assembly. So again, I'll select the bottom face of the assembly as the host plane and the back left corner of the vanity, this time for the reference point. I'll click next and set the target model detail to custom this time. In the remove section, you have the option to automatically select internal components or remove components by adjusting the percentage of the assembly size. I like the option to select the components from the graphics area. I feel like I have a little bit more control over what I'm removing. So removing components has its advantages. For instance, the hinge assembly might not be necessary detail for the architect. Um, also, maybe the plumbing holes on the back are the important aspect and the actual plumbing components can be removed. So I'll remove those as well. Um, and then I'll click next. The next page on the property manager is features to keep. The whole location will be important to the plumber, so I'll keep those. Uh, I may want to include the extruded feature on the underside of the vanity, uh, and also, let's say, the sink drain diameter, just for an example. When I click Next, SolidWorks will start removing features and internal detail. The last page allows you to remove any final features that were not automatically selected, and so it gives you one last chance to remove any features. Uh, lastly, I have the option to export the file as a Revit family file, so .rfa, or ASUS file type, so .sat. Before I import this file into Revit, I want to show you the custom properties that I had included. I ended up altering the vanity by applying materials to the components. When I open the custom properties, you can see I applied a material to each component. I also added a bounding box to the assembly as a way to provide an overall length, width, thickness, and volume of the cabinet, just for convenience. I was able to include those dimensions in the custom property, which will be exported with the Revit file. Again, I will go through the export property manager. This time I'll include more than just the holes on the back of the vanity. I'll make sure to grab the features that make up the sink and the bottom of the vanity. Uh, at the end of the property manager, be sure to check the box to include the custom properties. 
Next, we'll take a look at importing the Revit family files and the ACES files into Revit. Now for the import process. Let's take a look at what it's like to import a Revit family file and an ACES file created in SOLIDWORKS into Revit. We'll see if one import option might be a little bit better than the other, or we'll see if there's advantages to importing both. I'll start with importing the Revit family file we just created in SOLIDWORKS. Remember that I included the custom properties. Up in the top left corner is the family type properties. This is where the custom properties are transferred to. If you're handing this file off to a customer who uses Revit, providing more detail like the material properties for each part in the assembly is a nice added touch. The overall length, width, and height of the structure makes it easier for the person importing it into Revit to add any geometry or make sure it's going to fit in the Revit project. Now, I know the model that is imported doesn't look all that great. It appears like it has multiple facets instead of a single smooth surface. Um, since I've already done some testing on my own, I think I have a good solution for this. Uh, one of the export options in SOLIDWORKS was the ACES.SAT file, which we can import into this family and replace the geometry. The .SAT file comes in as a dumb solid and looks better when I change the visual type to shaded. Personally, I like the convenience of selecting the high detail mode in the export to AEC command. Ideally, I would add as much information to the custom properties ahead of time. That way, when I am ready to export, I can select high detail and export the assembly with all the components to a Revit family file with custom properties included. Then, quickly repeat the export process to make the ACES.SAT file type. Now, the Revit user can import the .RFA file which has the metadata included with it, and replace the geometry with the ACES.SAT file. So the workflow that I found to be the best workflow for importing in a SOLIDWORKS file to Revit is to take advantage of the custom properties that are included when you export a Revit family file using the export to AEC command, and then also take advantage of the better looking geometry you get with the aces.sat file. So to recap in SOLIDWORKS, we saw that you have the ability to export as a Revit family file or an aces.sat file using the export to AEC command. With the Revit family file, you can include custom properties to provide as much metadata to the Revit user. Then use the SAT file for better geometry. To bring things to a conclusion, we saw there are a ton of industries that use BIM software like Revit and have a good need to import CAD data created in SOLIDWORKS. The goal is to provide the BIM user with as much information as possible. We saw that you can rebuild the geometry in Revit after you import a DWG file then provide building information by adding the fixtures, materials, and light source to the Revit family. You can also use the export to AEC command in SOLIDWORKS to transfer the custom properties added to your file. Thank you for attending my webinar on BIM and mechanical design. If you're interested in learning more about export to AEC command, check out the link in the chat. If you guys are SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation users, stay tuned for Shivani's presentation, Are You Swimming Against the Current?